Let's read 1 Chronicles 16, 4. It says, And he appointed some of the Levites to minister before the ark of the Lord. Now, how many of you know it wasn't the ark? It was the presence on the ark. Amen? To do what? To commemorate, to thank, and to praise the Lord God of Israel. Obviously, part of the ministry to the Lord in the Old Testament was extolling and remembering God's virtues and who He was. We know that if you go to, if you, you were suddenly transported to heaven today and you were I- around the throne of God, you would hear incredible commemorating of God. The thing they commemorate the most of God is His holiness. The cherubim and the seraphim are chanting, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. You know what they're doing? They're, 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 they're talking about and they're praising and thanking God for who He is. To commemorate means to recall and show respect. It means to suffer. Celebrate. And that's what they did. The verse goes on to say, to commemorate, to thank, and to praise the Lord God of Israel. My friend, that is, pray, that is ministry to the Lord. Do you know that that ministers to God when you praise Him? We were in class this morning in Sunday school. And man, if you miss class, you, you miss stuff. I'm just telling you. We, we have a wonderful class at 930. You're all invited. But, it, you know, we... we, we we were talking, now I forgot, gave a commercial, and then I forgot what I was going to say. That's all right. I'm going to go back to the script, all right? Second Chronicles chapter 29 and verse 30 says this, Moreover, King Hezekiah and the leaders commanded the Levites to sing praise to the Lord with the words of David and of Asaph the seer. Then notice what it says. So they sang praises with gladness, and they bowed their heads, and they worshiped. You think, well, Pastor, you know, that's all great for the Old Testament, but I'm a New Testament believer. Do I got any people that are in the New Testament era? Amen. You're a New Testament believer. Amen. I'm a New Testament believer. Well, did you know that ministry to the Lord is mentioned in the New Testament? All right, let's look at Acts 13 and verse number 2. It says this, as they ministered to the Lord and fasted. How many when you fast, you're ministering to the Lord? Amen. They ministered to the Lord and fasted. The Holy Spirit said, Now separate to me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. And so there was obviously this group in the early church who had gotten together for the express purpose of ministering to the Lord. Some were prophets, some were teachers. Barnabas, Lucius, Simeon, Manan, uh, Saul, who was later called Paul. They were there. What were they doing? They were worshiping. They were praising. They were, they were, they were praying. They were interceding. They were waiting upon God. Spending time with him. In other words, what we find in the New Testament is they were doing basically the same thing they were doing in the Old Testament. They were there before the Lord ministering to him. Do I got anybody here that would say, I want to minister to the Lord. I want to be one who ministers to him. And I believe that ought to be a priority in our heart and life. That's why I I believe never being late for worship. Come on. Amen. Amen. I mean, doesn't the word say this? Thou shalt love the Lord your God with what? All your heart, all your mind, soul, and strength. Come on. That's the first commandment of the Lord. How many know it's not the praise, just the praise team's job to do that? Oh, well, they do that. They love Him. They worship Him. It's your job. It's my job to minister to the Lord. Can I just say this? If you decide to stay out in the lobby and visit with your friends yeah, before coming in, and you know what? You're, you're, you're taking time that's been set apart to minister to the Lord, and you're taking that away from Him. Come on, somebody. If, you're, if when you get here, your buddy's out in the parking lot, and you talk about the new motorcycle you got, and the football game, and the basketball game, and all, you're, you're, missing, you're missing time to minister to the Lord. Do I got anybody here that says, I'm going to minister? to Jesus. I'm going to praise Him. When I come into the house of God, my heart is to love Him and to express that. And you know what? Had, when, when we do that, God says, God says to us, I like that. <laughs> I like that. Amen. You know, I, I don't understand the new philosophy of church that got out today. You know, somebody wrote the one-minute Bible, thank you very little. I don't want a one-minute Bible. I don't want an eight-minute worship service. I don't want a 20-minute sermon. Come on. Some of y'all think, boy, I'd like a 20-minute sermon every now and again, Pastor Bob. 
You say, well, Pastor, is it really necessary that we get all into it like that? Listen, let me tell you something. David danced before the Lord with all of his might. Amen. He took off his outer cloak and he worshiped the Lord. And Michael was up there watching from the window. And she was like, why is he doing all of that? I mean, does he really have to carry on like that? In front of all the ladies in Israel anyhow. You know, the Bible says she was barren all of her life. Listen, man, don't criticize someone for the way they worship God. Here's the reason. Here's the reason why. You may not have had to walk where they walk. You may not have been set free from the same things they were set free from. You, you, you may not have to worship like that because you see they're trusted in Him. They're working as hard as they can to be in His presence. Amen. Oh, that's good. Amen. You say, well, I don't worship that way. Well, maybe you haven't been forgiven much. You know, I've been forgiven a lot. God's grace has touched my life. Let me tell you something, man. I've been forgiven much, so I love much. And so because I love much, I worship much. I minister to the Lord much. I praise Him much. Come on. You might, you might just come to my house, and, and Jereen might be at work, and, and you might be sitting outside the front door, and all of a sudden you hear this shout go, Hallelujah! Thank you, Jesus. I might be in my living room dancing before the Lord. I might be praising God. I might be worshiping. You want to know why? Because I'm grateful for His love. I'm grateful for the cross of Jesus. I'm grateful for all that He's done in my life. Come on, somebody. Man, what happened here last week? Some of y'all got free last week. I'm going to have to have my sister come down more often. All right, minister to the Lord. And then secondly, minister to those. We should be ministering to those of the household of faith. Do you got anybody that's part of the household of faith? You say, well, I'm not part of it. Let me tell you what. If you know Jesus, you're part of my household. Come on. The second highest priority, I believe, is to minister to the family of God. There was a moment when I answered the church phone a few years ago, and there was someone on the line, and don't misunderstand me. I, I, they were sincere. I know they had a real need. I know that they were, they were earnest, you know, and they were, they were calling for financial assistance. They needed help with their rent or the phone bill or whatever it was they were calling about. I don't remember the exact details. But, and they were pressing in. Don't you help people? Isn't that what a church is supposed to do? And they were really pressing for money. And, 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 and I, I just had to be honest with them. I said, I said ma'am, I said, you know, I'm, I'd be happy to pray with you. I can pray. And I know that there's a God. And I started to tell her some of the miracles I'd experienced. I said, there's a mighty God that can help you. Uh, but she says, don't, don't, don't you love the people in your community? I said, I do love the people in our community. But you have to understand something. There's some people within our own body, within the household of God. And you see, they get priority. Hello? They're going through the same thing as you, but, but they get priority. How many know that that's, the, that's what the kingdom of God is all about? Come on. And she said, I can't believe that you'd talk that way, preacher. And I said, well, you know something? I'm talking about my brothers and my sisters and my family, okay? Uh, they're, they're, these aren't just strangers to me. These are people that I know their name. I know some of their dog's names. I know some of their cat's names. Hello? These are my family, all right? Paul had the same idea. Galatians 6, number 10, 10 says, Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all. And we want to do good for everybody, right? But look what it says. Especially, tell your neighbor, if you're part of the family, you're special. You're special. Especially to the household, to those who are of the household of faith. Amen. Now, that being doing good doesn't necessarily mean giving people money. Amen. Sometimes it does. Did you know there are 52 commands in the New Testament with the phrase one another in it? Love one another. Bear one another's burdens. Forgive one another. Pray for one another. The truth is that Jereen and I, as pastors of this church, it is impossible for us to do all the ministry that needs to be done. We can't do all the teaching. We can't do all the work in the nursery. We can't do all the repairs and cleaning of the church. We can't visit all those who need visiting. Come on. We can't possibly meet every need. But I've got news together as the body body of Christ, we can meet every need. I believe it was Rick Warren who first asked the question, what on earth are you doing for heaven's sake? Come on. 
Everyone is supposed to minister, especially to the household of faith. Amen. I'm grateful to have Judah here today. Amen. Judah. He goes to school full time, works full time, and still is in Rangers every single Wednesday night. Come on. Let's give him a big hand today. I remember, I, I, I remember when Jeannie, before she was on the praise team, she used to come every Sunday morning and clean the front windows of the church. Why? So people, when they come in, they would feel like things were clean. Amen. And people do all kinds of things in this house. Amen. Some do yard work. Some clean the church every week. Can we just give a big hand clap for the Lord for those who do that? Amen. You know, they think they're ministering to the Lord. They're really ministering to the pastor and his wife. Amen. Some people visit people in the hospital. Some bring food to others when they're sick. Others express hospitality by inviting new people out to dinner. And I'll tell you, my wife is my hero. I knew I had to preach about Jereen a little bit today. Many years ago, she was counseling a young woman who was overwhelmed with the burden of small children. And she was falling into deep depression. And the laundry was piling up. And it was just huge piles of laundry. And the dishes hadn't been done. And my wife, as a servant of the Lord, went to her house and washed and folded clothes for two days and did those dishes. Why? Because the Scripture says, do good to those especially of the household of faith. Now, 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 now please, whatever you do, do not call Jereen this week. And ask her to come over and wash your clothes or do your dishes. That was a special dispensation of, I don't know, I'm getting myself in trouble here this morning. Come on. No, 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 no. But how many of you think that was a beautiful expression? Here's the question. What if we live that closely connected to one another like? What if we loved each other to that degree that when you heard that someone was sick, you arrived on their doorstep with some chicken soup and a prayer? Come on. Mm. One of the most important things that we can do is study His Word together. Amen. The Word. We, you know, we're, we're never to forsake meeting together. Hebrews 10, 25 says, Do not give up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another. We're supposed, when we come together, we encourage each other. I don't know about you, but I'm encouraged when you're here. Like the old little, po little poem goes like this, The preacher does better when you are there. It's hard to preach to an empty chair. Come on, somebody. Amen. You're encouraging me just by your presence here this morning. Amen. I want everybody who's ever taught in this church, if you've ever taught anything, even substituted in the nurse, would you stand up? Come on, all our teachers, stand up. Come on, we got lots of them. Come on, Carlos, you preach in this house. Come, come on, man, come on. Come on, Sister Patricia, I know you don't want to stand up. I'll call your name. You taught a class? Come on. Stand up. Come on. Amen. Let's give them a big hand today. Come on. Amen. When you come and you hear someone teach, you want to know what you're doing? Just by your presence, you're saying, I'm building up the ministry of teaching in this, in this house. I believe that the teaching of the Word of God is important, and, and, and that's important. And this, this body has a lot of needs. Amen. We, we, I can just start. We need some people to help us run sound and join Olu in greeting. Come on. Aren't you grateful for Olu out there? She's Amen. I need others in the nursery sometimes. We have this ministry called Celebrate Recovery, and I love it, and I believe in that ministry. But let me tell you, we, we could actually have as part of that ministry, if there would be somebody who would have a burden for children or teenagers that have that their parents are, are, are going through recovery. You know, there's a lot of people who would come on Friday night, but they can't pay a babysitter to watch the kids. What if we could have part of that program be where when they come, that there, there would be a program that ran right along Celebrate Recovery that would teach them the same principles from the Word of God. Amen. To the children and to the teenagers. Come on. How many think that would be a beautiful thing? We're going to believe God for that. We're going to pray for that. And God's going to bring it to pass. Come on. Somebody give the Lord a big hand of praise today. Celebration place and the landing. And then thirdly, we're supposed to be 